Hey, thank you so much for clicking on this video of Edumacation. In this series, I want to explore topics related to education. Today, I'm going to tackle class size. I'm going to spend a few minutes summarizing research, and then I'll end with my thoughts. In the comments, I hope you'll offer your feedback on class size, or you can offer a suggestion for a future Edumacation topic. Admittedly, there are pros and cons for classroom size reduction. Let's start with the cons of smaller classes. Listen, reducing class size is expensive. I mean, more teachers need to be hired. So I found an article called Class Size, What Research Says and What It Means for State Policy. Notice what it says right here. Increasing the pupil-student ratio in the U.S. by one student would save at least $12 billion per year in teacher salary costs alone. This article goes on to describe a study conducted in Tennessee in the 80s. Students and teachers were randomly assigned to either a small or regular classroom. Four years later, students in the small classroom had gained around three additional months of schooling. Are those gains enough to spend that kind of cash? Christopher Jebson wrote an article called Class Size, Does It Matter for Student Achievement? In his elevator pitch, he reports that some high-quality studies show no relationship between small classes and increased student achievement. In fact, there is research to support other policies instead. He summarizes a few cons to reducing class size. I've mentioned the first two. The third point is that most of the research focuses on elementary schools, so we don't know much about reduced classes in secondary schools. The fourth point addresses reducing class size in developing countries, but I don't see why it wouldn't apply to any place in need of teachers. Finally, he writes, policymakers should be aware that reducing class sizes can be costly, is no guarantee of improved achievement, and is only one of many possible reforms. The National Education Policy Center offers a free book called Rethinking Class Size. In it, the authors conduct a meta-analysis of class size studies. I mean, it's no surprise that many have argued that larger classes are better for students. For instance, Eric Hanushik wrote, bigger is better. He claims that in larger classes, students will learn to problem solve, gain independence, and develop critical thinking skills. The Times Education Supplement reported that larger classes frees up time and money for teachers to learn. Money I get, but more time? Andreas Slasher wrote that high-performing countries have large classes, so teachers should have large classes. The authors point to John Hattie's mega-analysis as an influence for those who support larger class sizes, so let's take some time to talk about Hattie. Hattie has conducted a mega-analysis on 1,200 meta-analysis which reported on more than 95,000 studies. From that, he created a list of 252 influences of learning outcomes and their effect sizes. Let's zoom on in here. You can see that reducing class size has a small effect size. However, Hattie does not intend for educators to focus on influences with large effect sizes. He hasn't said that influences with small effect sizes are unimportant. In fact, he argues that they are worth studying. Unfortunately, that doesn't stop others from using his list of influences to push for larger classes. Now, going back to rethinking class size. As with Hattie, the authors call for more focused studies. In light of the COVID pandemic, it makes sense to conduct new studies for a wide variety of education topics, not just class size. But what are the effects of smaller classes on, let's say, specific standardized test scores, IQ tests, grades, accelerated learning, individualized learning, student-teacher relationships, behavior, student engagement, parent engagement, attendance, peer relationships, teacher retention, the list goes on and on. In her book, Reign of Error, Dr. Diane Ravitch, an OG historian of education, dedicates a chapter to class size. She explains multiple benefits to class size reduction. 
she found a positive effect on minority children in the early grades. So children who were in these smaller classes, they got higher test scores, better grades, they behaved better, more likely to graduate from high school, and more likely to go to college. Next, she found that smaller classes offered more opportunities for social cooperation, discussion, debate, and critical thinking. Smaller classes have a significant impact on the black-white achievement gap. Low-income students who spend four years in the smaller classes are more likely to graduate from high school on time. Black students who are in the small classes eventually got higher scores on their college entrance test than those who were not in the smaller classes. Dr. Ravitch goes on to explain the benefits for teachers also. Small, manageable classrooms may retain experienced teachers. Teacher efficacy has a positive effect on student learning, so you want to keep those experienced teachers in the classroom. Plus, with smaller classes, teachers are better able to provide individual and small group instruction. They're able to provide effective feedback on assessments and assignments. Anecdotal evidence has convinced me that I'd rather have fewer students than more students. It's not happened often in my career, but I've had as few as 17 fifth graders in class. There are fewer behavior problems with that number of students. Plus, there's plenty of time to work one-on-one -on -one with students. Some supporters of larger classes point to the achievement levels of students in countries with larger classes, such as Japan, China, and South Korea. Culture plays a huge part in education. If we're going to compare our class sizes and achievement with those countries, we also need to compare time in school, curriculum, parent involvement, respect for the profession, etc. Over the last few years, there's been a stronger push for teachers to create individualized instruction for their students. Through assessments, we are expected to meet the students where they are and help them grow at their individual paces. That doesn't happen with large classes. With large classes, you're going to get a one-size-fits-all education. Now, I'm sure there's a number of reasons why politicians, business leaders, and others send their kids to private schools. I wonder if smaller classes are one of those reasons. That's it for this video. If you've made it this far, I can't thank you enough, and I encourage you to offer suggestions to improve this type of video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've been educated.